Yo, what's going on people? It's your boy Ape Hancho, back at you again with another video. Now, I don't know how familiar you guys are with the dark web, but it is believed that if you are in with certain groups on there, then you can get to some pretty, and no pun intended, dark places. Now, as a lot of you will know though, the majority of people who go on the dark web normally go on there for the drug marketplaces, and I'm pretty sure it's common knowledge by now that here in the UK in 2020, yes, the Royal Mail is a drugs courier for online drug vendors. If you've ever done any research into the dark web, then you would have heard of stories like Hitman for Hire, Red Rooms, and access to certain materials such as child pornography. Again, a lot of the time when we see videos or Reddit posts about these subjects, they're normally some kind of creepypasta or made up story for a YouTube video. Now, I'm not doubting that some of these things do exist on the dark web because for one, if you guys have never heard of a man by the name of Peter Scully, then you're gonna be in for a bit of a shock with what I'm about to tell you. In 2011, Australian native Peter Scully fled his home city of Melbourne in Victoria, Australia, and headed over to the city of Manila in the Philippines because he was wanted for his involvement in a property scheme that cost investors over two 2.68 million dollars. Whilst in the Philippines, Scully relocated into the south of the country and it was here he was alleged to have built up an international child sexual abuse ring where he offered pay-per-view streams which showed children being tortured and sexually abused which you could view on, you guessed it, the dark web on his website called No Limits Fun. Now if you guys don't know, certain parts of the Philippines are extremely poor so any offer of the smallest things such as food for example, the locals will snatch up in seconds and Peter Scully knew this. So he, along with his two girlfriends, would go on and lure young girls in, and it was here he would then go on to make his twisted films. In one incident, it was said that Scully and one of his girlfriends lured two teenage girls into his house with the promise of food, and it was then Scully gave them alcohol and forced the two teenage girls to perform sex acts on each other, which he photographed and filmed. It was then said when the girls tried to escape at some point later, Scully forced them to dig their graves in the basement of the house and threatened that he would bury them there. After five days, the girls went on to be released by one of the girlfriends who began to feel remorse for them. The reason this case is so infamous though, is the fact that a movie titled Daisy's Destruction, which was filmed in 2012, had started to surface on the internet. It was said that Scully had sold the movie to clients for around 10,000 pounds, and it was said to have been that extreme that it was considered an urban legend for some time. In the film, it depicts the torture and brutal rape of a number of girls by Scully and his girlfriends, with the main victims being 12-year-old Liza, 11-year-old Cindy, and 18-month-old Daisy. Among those who acquired the movie was one of the biggest ever sellers of child pornography, an Australian man known as Matthew David Graham, better known by his online pseudonym, Lux. At the age of 22, he went on to run a series of hurt called child pornography sites and said once he received Daisy's destruction, he used it to attract more viewers to his network of websites. Now bear in mind this man runs child pornography websites on the dark web, but it was said the nature of Daisy's destruction was that bad that it quickly gained the attention of law enforcement agencies and the media alike. The Dutch National Child Exploitation Team was the first to open an investigation with the goal of locating the victims and then an international manhunt was set up to catch those responsible. On the 20th of February 2015, law enforcement agencies in the Philippines finally caught up with the perpetrators and were all arrested on various charges. In regards to the three involved in Daisy's destruction, it was said that Liza was alive and well, as well as Daisy, although she was treated that badly throughout filming that it's been said that she'll have physical injuries that will last the rest of her life. For Cindy though, investigators discovered that she was forced to dig her own grave and then Scully videotaped himself killing her and then of course she was buried there. In total, it was said that Scully raped 75 children and was facing a total of 75 charges and in 2018, he was sentenced to life in prison. So as you can see, people can access the dark web to view these kinds of videos and this next story we're about to get into follows a deputy head teacher at a primary school who's recently been found guilty for accessing these kinds of materials online. On the 10th of June, 2020, Richard Swinnerton, an ex-deputy head teacher at St. Clair's Catholic Primary school in Middlesbrough made a court appearance at Teesside Magistrates Court after a national crime agency investigation. At this point, all that was being reported was the fact that the charges were in relation to him possessing illegal images of children relating to Category A, which is the most severe, Category B and Category C. It was heard that all the material was in relation to online child sex abuse and there was no evidence to suggest that any of the images
sausages were made at the school and there is no allegation of physical abuse. Yesterday though, on the 14th of September 2020, he once again made an appearance at Teesside Magistrates Court where he went on to plead guilty to all three counts brought against him. It was heard at this court hearing that the National Crime Agency carried out an investigation into Richard and subsequently carried out a search on his home address on the 15th of May 2020 and while searching his property they seized his laptop. Following his arrest, the NCA confirmed that the laptop contained 87 Category A videos of child abuse and he himself admitted to investigators that he watched child sexual abuse on the dark web for two years prior with footage that included adults raping children. He was then granted conditional bail until his sentencing date which is yet to be confirmed and that's going to be at Teesside Crown Court rather than Magistrates Court. NCA operations manager Julie Brooker said Swinnerton had gone to considerable lengths using Tor to commit his offences and thought he was anonymous on the dark web. Offenders who view child sexual abuse are contributing to ever more children being abused and condemning them of years of extreme trauma and suffering. Every child in an abuse image is re-victimised when the photograph is viewed or shared. Protecting children from sexual abuse and stopping paedophiles is a top priority for the NCA. So I thought I'd let you guys know that since this has happened, Richard of course has since resigned from his job and of course when the sentencing date does come around and when we find out what he was sentenced to, I'll probably put a community tab post up and I'll more than likely post it to my Instagram. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, it's ape Hunter with the number zero, not the letter O. Now, this is probably one of the first times I've reported on a case like this. Of course, we normally go over murders or shootings or stabbings, but I am looking to probably do more stuff like this also because I do feel like stories like this do need to get shared because I feel like with a lot of other stuff going on in the news right now, along with like COVID and things like that, I feel like things like this get swept under the rug and they really shouldn't do. But let me know what you guys think of this in the comment section below. Give the video a little like. And if you want the latest drill, street and music news out of the UK, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your boy, Honcho, and I'm out.